I'm Joe Alden, MD, wearing a white coat for the first time in a while. How about that? Also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 650 posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster where the ambulance may not be on the way. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, a nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the three-category Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, the New York Times bestseller, The Ebola Survival Handbook, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits for austere environments. Even a board game, as a matter of fact, Doom and Bloom Survival, a fun and challenging way to get the whole family thinking about preparedness. A lot of fun. Now, there are many antibiotics, but what antibiotics accessible to the average person would be good additions to your medical storage? When do you use a particular drug? In this introduction to a series of videos on different antibiotics, we'll discuss the ones that I think would be useful for your medical arsenal. Now, before I start, I just want to say that this information is only for entertainment purposes and does not take the place of seeking medical care from certified professionals. The practice of medicine without a license is illegal and punishable by law. If modern medicine exists, please seek it out. There are various antibiotics that you can choose from, many of which I consider worthwhile as a medical storage item. Here's a list along with their veterinary equivalents. Veterinary antibiotics are acceptable if they meet certain criteria. There's only one ingredient in the medicine, the antibiotic itself. Nothing to make your scale shinier or your feathers brighter. The veterinary drug is only produced at human dosages. Fish mox, for example, only comes in 250 or 500 milligrams. The dosage is produced for human use. And the pill or tablet has to be identical to the drug produced for humans by at least one accredited laboratory. Fish mox forte, for example, is identical to 500 milligrams of amoxicillin produced by Deva Pharmaceuticals for humans. You can see that here. Other than allergies, there are other times when a particular antibiotic or other drug should not be used. Many medications, for example, are not recommended during pregnancy. Sometimes this is because lab studies have shown birth defects in animal fetuses exposed to the drug. Other times, it's simply because no studies on pregnant women or animals has yet to be performed. There are additional circumstances where a particular medication should not be used. There may be warnings about mixing one drug with another because there may be a dangerous interaction between them. For example, taking the antibiotic metronidazole, also known as fishazole, and drinking alcohol will make you vomit. Some drug interactions may cause the effect of one of them to become stronger or weaker when combined. As well, you may wish to avoid some drugs due to their known side effects, like nausea or diarrhea. You can't be expected to know everything regarding every medication. You should, however, know quite a bit about drugs that you could expect to use as a caregiver in a survival setting. This information is freely available in books such as The Physician Desk Reference. You just have to spend some time absorbing it. With antibiotics, it should be noted that different physicians may use a specific drug for different purposes and to treat a variety of infections. There's always some variance when you receive opinions about treatment from different caregivers. Our next few videos will outline antibiotics that I think will be good to have in your survival medicine cabinet. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, are you ready to deal with medical issues in a disaster? With the Survival Medicine Handbook, you'll get a head start on keeping your family safe in times of trouble. Read over 200 five-star reviews at Amazon.com or get an autographed copy on our Survival Medicine website, www.doomandbloom.net. Thanks again.